During the 60s, Disney was looking for ways to make animation cheaper and less time-consuming, so it went for a xerography, which is basically using pencils for drawings and computers for coloring. It made things a lot easier, but it also took away the beauty of brushes. The animators were also reusing beta animations from earlier films, and were adapting far less interesting tales, which made them seem like they got cheap and unoriginal. This is why this period is often called the Dark Age of Disney. It begins with 101 Dalmatians, which is basically another Lady and the Trump, only with far less interesting animation. More talking dogs, more mundane settings. Only Cruella de Vil stands out for being an over-the-top villain next to generic-looking good guys. And even she's not enough to save this dreadfully boring movie, since her motives were nonsense and petty. I will still give it a 4 out of 10, the same score as Lady and the Trump, since despite the inferior animation, at least it has a memorable villain. The Sword in the Stone was very loosely based on the myth of King Arthur, and doesn't even get to the interesting stuff after he takes the sword. It wastes all its duration on a silly message about education being more important than having fun, because apparently you can't have both, and it doesn't even matter at the end since it was his destiny to become a king, so who cares if he was educated or was fooling around? He didn't do something to earn the sword, he found it by accident and was rewarded for it, thus rendering the whole movie pointless. 1 out of 10. This movie was boring, its themes were bullshit, and it was a cash grab of something far more interesting. The Jungle Book was completely watered down compared to the source. The action scenes with the animals were fun, but there wasn't much in terms of a conflict. Mowgli doesn't actually struggle between staying in the jungle or going to the human village. He's just been tossed around from one animal to another. He doesn't even reach to an epiphany at the end. He just sees a pretty girl and decides to stay with the humans because he had a boner. That's as far as the message went when it came to dealing with your identity crisis. You spend your whole life in the jungle, you see a girl you know nothing about, and you drop everything you know just to go to an unfamiliar place where you are a complete stranger. What a load of crock! Almost every other adaptation of the same book is way better than this one. 2 out of 10. The last movie of the 60s was The Aristocats, which was made by the numbers of a run-of-the-mill cartoon. Despite being an action-packed adventure, there was nothing memorable about them. Maybe the cat song, and only if you like musicals? Even the 101 Dalmatians had a memorable villain. This doesn't even have that. 3 out of 10. Moving to the 70s with Robin Hood, or what Disney did to Robin Hood since everyone is attacking Animal. I can at least say that it's following the myth and it's not completely bullshit like the sword in the stone. Other than that, it's okay. It's not nearly as good as many live-action adaptations, but as far as action adventures goes, it's watchable. But that's all it is. 6 out of 10. Winnie the fucking Pooh. I can't stand this, it's for babies, there's nothing going on in it, it's slice of life for preschoolers. It was making me fall asleep after 10 minutes. I am not consuming fiction so I can be bored. I have my actual life for that. 3 out of 10. The last movie of the 70s was The Rescuers, which, just like the Aristocats, is an adventure about talking animals and has nothing memorable in it. Some can claim bipedal mice trying to save a kidnapped human girl is a lot more relatable than a bunch of kittens trying to return home, but it felt the same kind of boring to me since there was nothing out of the ordinary. I am not consuming fiction so I can see ordinary things, I have my actual life for that. 3 out of 10. Moving to the 80s with the fox and the hound. Just like the Jungle Book, the premise is a conflict regarding who you are, and it's spending most of the film in the protagonist being chased around. It also doesn't go anywhere interesting with it, and it all comes down to the power of friendship. Very childish and possible, 3 out of 10. The Black Cauldron stands out completely from everything else Disney made so far. It's dark and somewhat scary compared to the kittens and puppies we were getting all this time. And it's an actual adventure with stakes in a medieval setting, unlike the bull that was the sword in the stone. With that said, the plot is complete nonsense. It's cheesy, it has plot conveniences, and it doesn't feel like it rewards you after being so hyped up at first. The characters are not used properly at all. The protagonist is obnoxious and gets a magic sword without doing something to earn it. There is a princess, for no reason, there is a bard, for no reason, and there is an annoying talking animal which you wish to strangle with your own hands. 
Disney tried to make a dark fantasy epic, but it didn't want to commit to it and the tone of the film ended up being all over the place. It disappoints you with how silly everything is resolved, despite making it seem to be hard and dangerous at first. As much as I love the aesthetics, it's not a well-written movie. It's super memorable, but it's not good. 4 out of 10. The Great Mouse Detective is a Sherlock Holmes with talking animals. It has the same silly atmosphere as the rescuers, but at least the stakes are higher, there is a bigger emphasis on the society the story takes place in, some mind games, some deception, and a lot of action to make it an enjoyable run-of-the-mill action flick. 5 out of 10. And finally, Oliver and Company is Oliver Twist as a musical with talking animals. It's as silly as it sounds and it's basically another Aristocats. 3 out of 10. Next time, we move to the renaissance of Disney!